Hi Highlands, this is James, coming to you from the cafe here at Highlands Church. We miss you guys so much and we are looking forward to the day when we can meet together as a congregation and celebrate and uh, experience worship uh, as close as possible. Uh, the other day we had a great gathering on the lawn called Sunset at the Cross and people were respecting social distance and also having a fantastic time uh, just listening to some music. But that said, we decided that we would not have large group gatherings, uh, meaning the whole church meeting together, because our space just doesn't allow it. And logistically, it doesn't adhere to the guidelines provided for us by the state of California or the federal government. And we want to make sure that we're adhering to those guidelines and that we're doing everything we can out of an abundance of caution and safety and respect for those elected officials. Now, that said, we are gonna to continue to pour our energy into the online services, and we want you to be a part of that. Please don't give up on that. Please continue to celebrate with us on Sunday mornings and be a part of the chat rooms. There's another thing that we'd like to add, though. We'd like to encourage those of you who feel comfortable and who feel called to the front lines of ministry to open up your homes. Uh, we want you to open up your garages if you'd like to, or your backyards. And for those of you that feel comfortable and you, those of you that have space to do so, open up your homes so that you could invite your neighbors, you could invite your friends over to your house for a watch party, essentially church at home. See, church has never been about a building. In fact, the earliest followers of Jesus were dispersed all over the world and their big temple had been destroyed by Rome. And what they discovered is that the church grew more than ever during that time. There were more people coming to Jesus and there were more people discovering the love of God during the time when the church was not meeting in a centralized location. And so I think that this is an opportunity for us. It's an opportunity for us to invite people we wouldn't normally invite. I and my wife and a couple of us other staff members are going to open up our homes and we are going to invite people to our houses uh, to experience worship. Now, we're not doing that this weekend, but that is the plan going forward uh, in the next coming weeks, that we would actually have more people attending worship and more people participating in the life of Highlands than ever before. If you really add up all the space that we have here at the church, it's nothing compared to all the space that could be made available if we opened up our hearts and our homes to those people in our neighborhoods who would feel comfortable participating in a service. Now, However you do it is not something that we are going to uh, dictate. We are going to let you uh, be the person, be the pastor who can make those smart decisions and connect with the people that are, uh, that are coming to your house. We'll give you more guidelines. We'll give you more tools in the coming weeks, but I want to let you know that this is our approach moving forward. Yes, we're going to continue to have our occasional gatherings here and there like we did this last week at the Sunset at the Cross event, which was fantastic. But again, logistically to have the entire church in one location all, at, all on one day would be very, very difficult for us as a church. And we are pretty convinced that the restrictions and guidelines would, would offer a pretty weird worship experience with everybody wearing masks and no one singing and, and people not being able to touch people. So we want to make sure that we have a, an exciting, uh, beautiful experience that we're inviting new people to. A uh, couple of friends of ours down in Orange County have had something that they call a garage church. And they have bought donuts and they have invited their neighbors and they have flung open the door of their garage and turned on their garage TV. And they have actually invited their friends uh, on Sunday mornings to join them socially distanced and safe in their garage and in their driveway to celebrate with them on a Sunday morning. This is the kind of creativity uh, that happens when we are restricted in our usual patterns. In, in fact, this could be a time of amazing creativity as you guys open up your minds and your hearts to think about how God is calling you to be a pastor in your neighborhood, to turn your home into a church, and to, for you to really experience the joy of invitation. So again, we are going to open up and have worship here in the church someday. We don't know when it's going to be. All of this that we're announcing, we recognize is temporary. This whole life is temporary. But these restrictions, these guidelines that are happening, they are changing week to week. And to tell you that we had more uh, knowledge or more idea of what is going to be happening in the future would, would just not be true. 
Uh, so we're not going to lay down a specific date for us to return back here at Highlands, uh, worshiping in the worship space, but we will continue to meet. We've met more than, uh, more than a few times every single week, and we've had robust conversations trying to figure out what is the best decision for our church. Now, this is what I want you to hear. Jesus said that where two or three are gathered, there I am. The church has never been a building. The church is not a location. You are the church. And when two people gather together, Jesus was telling us that that is the entirety of the church. You don't need more than two people or three people to experience what the Bible and Jesus would refer to as church. So as you experience this time and you ask yourself, am I really experiencing church? I want to encourage you. Church is what you are doing when you are inviting another human being into your space, whether it's your spouse or your kids or your grandkids or anyone else, and you're placing Jesus Christ at the center and you're reflecting on his word, you're praying together, and you are celebrating who God is. So again, we are going to have a lot more announcements in the future. I couldn't tell you firsthand what those announcements will be with regard to our progressive plans because we're going to take that a week at a time. And I want you to let, I want you to know that there is an opportunity here. This is not about being limited. This is actually having our minds and our patterns and our homes and our ministries expanded in a way that we never could have envisioned or imagined before. Believe this, God can expand your ministry and expand this church as you let go of the things that we cannot hold on to right now. And we embrace those things that are available to us. Uh, instead of seeing our glass as half empty, we are gonna see our glass as overflowing because there is so much opportunity and so much, uh, so much love that God has filled our hearts with to meet that opportunity and to address the needs of those in our community. By the way, Highlands has never been closed. Highlands is not about one hour a week. It is about the other 165 hours every week that, that it is operating. Did you know that since COVID-19 began, we have adopted over 30 families to bring food to? We have been a resource to between restaurants and families uh, to receive funds and, and, and food on a weekly basis. We have actually helped build a playground in Uganda and funded that playground. We have been engaged in ministries and, and pocket communities, uh, safe uh, counseling sessions for groups of teenagers who have not been able to go to their graduation services. We've been able to walk alongside them through that difficult reality. Uh, we have been able to have uh, online communities. We have expanded our reach and more people are meeting in small groups now than ever before. And so... If you're not part of this, this connectional community that, that has, has essentially flourished since this COVID-19 crisis began, I want to encourage you to step out in faith in a new way. Try something new. Every person who has tried Zoom that I have been on Zoom with has been pleasantly surprised and found out that meeting online in a video conference format is far easier than they ever anticipated it would be. So again, we are praying for you. We love you. We want to, want to know how you would like to help, and we'd also like to know if you need help. If there is anything at all, please don't hesitate. We will confidentially process your prayers and your requests, and we will lift them all up and respond with the love of Jesus. This is not a time for the church to shrink back and throw up its hands and say, whoa, we can't do what we usually do. This is a time for the church to rise to the occasion and show that our our spirit is resilient, that we are patient, we are kind, that we are compassionate, that we are, we are the ones who are going to be on the front lines, not just of, of the hospitals and of the, of the other services in our community, but we are going to be on the front lines of our neighborhood because that is where the need is. It's at our doorstep. And we are being called, I believe, to, to rise up, to, to be invigorated with life for our neighbors uh, in a way that we've never done, not in years, not in decades at Highlands Church. And if we do this, if we do this, I know that we will be fulfilling what Jesus called us to do, to love our neighbors as ourselves. You see, it's not just about us getting back to church. It's about recognizing that that yearning to go to church is not in many of our neighbors' hearts because they have not experienced the goodness of breaking bread, of spending time together and having fellowship. Let's open our doors of our homes and welcome them into the space that we have cherished so much, which isn't a place. 
It's a, it's a space within our hearts and our minds and our souls that is dedicated and devoted to God that we, that, we, that we present as an offering every single time that we meet on a Sunday morning. Let's open up our, our experience of worship so that more and more people can, can, can be a part, to, part of it. Now, if you have a big space, the guidelines are out there. They say that you could have up to 100 people socially distanced if you have a giant, giant property. If you have a small space, you can invite people. It says groups of 10 or less. Now, these guidelines are changing all the time. I encourage you to check them out. But listen, there is opportunity here, and this is not a time for us to, to sit back and wait for the chance to meet in our building. This is a time for us to think about, wait a second, what is God doing and how can we, at the end of this, say, look at what we did to seize this historic moment, not just in our city or the country, this historic moment for the world? Remember, the earliest church expanded. It multiplied. More people ended up going to, the church, going to church when it was decentralized and the, the actual temple had been destroyed than ever at any other time in history. So if you feel like, like church is limited right now because we can't meet in a centralized location, I want to offer this vision. This is perhaps the time when God will multiply our ministries and bring us to the doorsteps of the people in need more than ever before. I'm encouraged. I hope you are too. Now there's lots to be discouraged about. There's lots to be worried about. There's lots to be fearful about. And there's lots to, lots to be upset about. But that is not what we'll be known for. That is not how God is calling us to be be as a church to the world. God is calling us to show our spirit of compassion and kindness and to stand up uh, in, in a beautiful way for those who are in need in our community. This opportunity is a time when you will look back and you will say, you know what? I recognize that I was being called, and not every one of you, by the way, not every one of you is being called to the front lines of your neighborhood. Perhaps you're just feeling like you're getting by right now, and that's okay. But there are people I know in this congregation who have this fire in their hearts, and they want to worship with other people. And our current regulations and guidelines are simply not making that a reality or a possible situation for us right now. That doesn't mean you should wait. That means that you should be planning and preparing how you can live out that call within your neighborhood and open up your church as a home, open your open up your home as a church and be the pastor of your a parish of your of your neighborhood and to minister to the people that are right there on your doorstep. And if we all do that, this whole entire city, this whole county, this whole country and this whole world will be loved in a powerful way. I'm praying for you. I know that this is a lot of information to take in. Trust me, our teams have been thinking about this stuff for weeks. We've been thinking about this for months. We've been talking about it for months. And we have explored every opportunity available to us. Are we going to be open to change our plans in a minute if anything changes? Absolutely. Are we going to change our plans next week if there's an opportunity to do so? For sure. But right now, right now, we are going to deal with our current and present circumstances. And we are going to do it in a way, I I imagine Paul and his fellow disciples imprisoned uh, by the local officials because they were teaching about Jesus. Now think about that. Paul could have said, you know what, I'm in prison. I am am unable to, uh, to leave this cell, so therefore I cannot do ministry. You are restricted right now. And it may be, just like Paul experienced, it may be that God does your greatest ministry, the greatest ministry of your life right now in your time of restriction. Paul was restricted and he, he told the whole entire prison population that he was in prison with about Jesus and they all started to sing out to God and they were all transformed and they were all brought into a place of worship. Worship wherever you are. You don't need to be in a building. As Paul pointed out, you could even be in a prison cell and you can worship God. There is nothing about place that is, is, is stipulated in the Bible in terms of our need of a place for worship in the New Testament. No, it's just the person of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Spirit, which is with you wherever you go. So right now, let's pray. Let's lift this up to God. If there's anything I haven't said or anything that I've misspoke, please, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just fill that over and you'd understand that it's coming from a place of love and care for you. 
And I look forward to, to hearing from you and, and to praying with you and to being open. I, I just really, and as long, and I'm speaking on behalf of all the leadership that made this decision unanimously, all the leadership voted uh, on Thursday and they all voted together. And it was, it was all of us feeling that this was the right path forward. But are we open to hearing your voice? Absolutely. And if you have something that you feel God is calling uh, you to speak to us, please do so. We love you. We want this to be a time when we are remembered for our love for one another and our love for the world and that we would not be pulled apart during this time, but that we would be drawn together, united, stronger than we've ever been before. So let's, let's bow our heads in prayer and let's lift up this time and let's, let's ask God, let's plead to God that God would expand our opportunities and our imaginations to meet uh, the ministry that is in front of us that God is calling us into. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for who you are and what you're doing. We thank you for the way in which you are taking any darkness, of course, the terrible darkness of this COVID, which has wreaked havoc in our economies and our healthcare systems and in our government and everything else, in our, our relationships and in our schools. All of those things have been turned upside down, God. But we know that you have the power to bring about more good than ever before. That you have the power to transform this dark moment into a one of brightness. And so we pray that you would take this, uh, this time and use our offering of self and soul. And, and as we lift ourselves to you and walk toward you and toward your call, Lord God, we pray that you would just take what we have and multiply it and use it for your glory, whatever that would be. That our testimony of your goodness would be the thing that would resound most in our life and for generations to come. And that people would remember that there was a time when, when the church, the church was restricted, but it, but it multiplied and it magnified your goodness and your love in ways that no one had ever expected. And God, we know that your hand is in this. We know that you are at work and that you are, you are just waiting for us to turn to you and ask you, God, to do what you always do. And that is to do the thing that surprises us, to show that you have no limitations, that there are no bounds upon you and what you can do. And that you, uh, when we ask you to, you do incredible things for the world. And so we lift you up, God. We pray for all the churches. We know that each church is making different decisions as you are leading them. And we pray that there would just be grace over that. And we'd recognize that each one of those leaders is trying to do their best to love their congregations and to love you and to love this community and this world. And so just let these churches know that there's no one, one size fits all solution. Uh, smaller churches that are meeting now and are able to do so. God bless them. God, we're so thankful for those churches and for those people all over the world, not just pastors and parishioners, but all over the world who are being called to the front lines, God. Just lift them up and help them to know that we honor them and we, pr we praise you for their sacrifice and their willingness to serve and to work hard to bring this economy back and to, to bring health back to our communities and to, to serve those who are in most need. And so God, I just thank you so much for each and every person who is, who is lending their voice and their hands and their heart to bring our community, not just back to what it was, but to something better than it's ever been before. And we praise you, God, and pray this in Jesus' holy name. And all God's people, wherever you are, said together, amen. Take care.